race car, the tires made a huge difference. And watch as he goes in the corner, just, just drove right by, barely backed off the throttle, it seemed like, to make the corner. He makes the move by. We told you at the top of the show, for 47 years, ARCA has been a conduit for young drivers to be able to get super... Well, it's finally been done in an international race of champions. From the Irish Hills of Southern Michigan, the True Value International Race of Champions and Michigan Speedway celebrate their silver anniversary event. The first IROC oval race ever was here on September 14, 1974, and it was a great duel between Bobby Unzer and Cale Yarborough. Yarborough is still appearing to be in the better position of the two. If Kale's going to make his move, it would be now, and there... Nope, not quite yet. Here he comes, out of the final turn, making the move. He's not going to make it. Unser will win the race. Now it's IROC 23. Dale Earnhardt is atop the point standings, and the top five in points are stock car drivers. Dr. Jerry Punch, the first two IROC races of the year will be hard to beat today. Both IROC events held in 1999 have produced ferocious fireworks and electrifying finishes. In February at Daytona, four-time IROC champion Mark Martin would dominate the day, only to be victimized by a patented Dale Earnhardt slingshot maneuver on the final lap for the win. Two months later at Talladega, five drivers would share the lead until the final lap when, you guessed it, Earnhardt makes a move in the travel to steal yet another victory. The scorecard after two events shows that Dale Earnhardt has led just two laps, but they've been the most important two, the final of each event, thus yielding two victories. Now, if history holds true here at Michigan, we could see another first-time winner in IROC because in the 23-year history of IROC racing here at Michigan, only three drivers have won this race more than once. You know, there are six rookies in today's field. The last two winners here at Michigan have been rookie drivers, Randy LaJolie in 97 and Jeff Burton a year ago. Who are some of the likely candidates today? Well, how about the Swede with speed? Indy 500 winner Kenny Breck, whose top five finishes at Daytona and Talladega have impressed everyone, including his peers. How about CART FedEx Championship driver Greg Moore, whose most important victory in his career thus far came here a year ago when he made a gallant pass in the last lap to capture the U.S. 500 after a CART record 62 lead changes. And how about front row starting? Dale Earnhardt Jr., the young man who made his Super Speedway debut in a Bush car here two years ago. That impressive performance catapulted him to a Bush Chair and Series Championship, the first of many to come. Bob, just three of six rookie drivers that have a shot of picking up their first win here today. Jerry, should be a great race. I'm Bob Jenkins along with Darrell Waltrip and Benny Parsons. Now, as you saw, the top five in the points are stock car drivers. They historically have dominated the IROC series. So, Darrell, does this track mean that it's going to be easier or more difficult for these open wheel guys here this afternoon? Well, quite frankly, I believe it'll, I believe it'll be much tougher. Uh, Benny may or may not agree, but uh, Daytona and Talladega, as you know, it's horsepower. It's position. It's knowing the draft. Here, you got to finesse. You got to drive the car. You got to get it down the corner, get off the throttle, get on the throttle. A lot more car control here than we saw at Daytona and Talladega. That's going to give a slight advantage to the stock car guys, I think, Benny. If anybody's going to win this championship but the top five, they've got to get moving today. Just like in a golf tournament, they say on Saturday the third round is moving day. You move your way towards the front. Today in IROC is moving day. You've got to move up towards the front in the points to have a chance to win the championship. But even if Earnhardt should win again, he cannot clinch the championship. It will be decided at Indianapolis. Now, let's take a look at the starting lineup for race three of IROC 23. In row one from the NASCAR Winston Cup Series, it's Jeff Burton. And from the NASCAR Bush Series Grand National Division, Dale Earnhardt Jr., a rookie in IROC. Burton is in his second year of IROC competition. Since Talladega, he picked up his third 99 Winston Cup win at the Coca-Cola 600. And Dad congratulated son Little Lee when he won his first Bush race of 99 at Dover. In row number two from the Pep Boys Indy Racing League, Eddie Cheever, and from the Cart FedEx Championship Series, Greg Moore, both are rookies in IROC. In row number three from NASCAR Winston Cup, it's Dale Jarrett. And from the Cart FedEx Championship Series, Adrian Fernandez, a rookie in the series. 
Dale Jarrett is in his fourth IROC season since Talladega. He won at Richmond and helped push him into the top of the Winston Cup points. In the fourth row, Kenny Breck from the Pep Boys Indy Racing League and Jeff Gordon from the NASCAR Winston Cup Series in his fifth season. Kenny Breck, an IROC rookie. Well, the notation after his name will forever read 99 Indy 500 winner. In row five, a couple of NASCAR Winston Cup drivers, Rusty Wallace, the 1991 IROC champ, and Bobby Labonte, a first-time IROC competitor. Since Talladega, Labonte claimed another NASCAR Winston Cup win in Dover. And in row number six, a couple of Winston Cup competitors, Mark Martin, the defending IROC champion, and Dale Earnhardt, a two-time IROC champ. After his IROC win at Talladega, he went on to win the NASCAR Winston Cup race the next day at the same venue. So there are the 12 drivers who are set to go for 100 miles, 50 laps of racing here at Michigan Speedway, race number three of 1999. Let's go down for the command. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for those magic words of motorsports, here is Mr. Frank Rothing, the True Value Vice President of Advertising. On behalf of True Value Hardware Stores, gentlemen, start your engines. <laughs> some it's auto racing's all-star game to others it's the sport version of the masters either way the most essential element holds true the true value international race of champions is open only to the world's best drivers no one else need apply round three for 99 coming up whenever you see racetracks around the world you usually see mobile one signs so many people think that mobile one synthetic is only for high performance cars. Well, let me dispel that myth for you right now. Mobile One can improve the performance of almost any car while protecting the engine even under the most severe conditions. So for the same reason the race guys use Mobile One, so should you. Nothing outperforms Mobile One. The galaxy's most legendary heroes. Fearsome villains and coolest vehicles. Now available to take home and play with at Taco Bell, KFC, and Pizza Hut. Right now at participating Pizza Hut locations, you can get one of these Pizza Place Love Star Wars Episode One toys, 99 cents each with every pizza purchase. You can get them at Pizza Hut or even get them delivered. seem to disappear whenever they go shopping with you? Well, Radio Shack did a nationwide survey of men to see what grabs them most. Not surprisingly, it turned out to be electronics, like the gifts we have on sale for Father's Day right now. The survey proved it. We have what men are attracted to. For Father's Day, it's Radio Shack, the place that has great gifts all year for men and women. IROC race number three of 1999 getting set to go here at Michigan Speedway. On board cameras today, we have several of them. Dale Earnhardt will be carrying one from his last starting position back in row number six. Alongside him will be Mark Martin. He also will have one of our onboard cameras. He's a three-time IROC champion, so five championships represented in the last row here at Michigan today. Bobby Labonte will have an onboard camera. He finished second in the first round of 99 at Daytona. Jeff Gordon has one IROC win. That came last year at Daytona. Kenny Breck, his best finish this year has been fourth at Daytona, but also had a fifth place finish at Talladega. 
and Greg Moore from the Car FedEx Championship Series with his best place finish in 99, a fifth at the World Center of Racing. Looking for their first win in IROC today, Labonte, Breck, Fernandez, Jarrett Moore, Cheever, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. And the field is ready to go racing here. 50 laps of competition on this two-mile oval at Michigan. Green waves, and here we go. down on the inside that uh, really didn't make much headway. Earnhardt, meanwhile, having a bit of a struggle here in the first half a lap, but uh, don't count him out even on the last lap because that's how he's won the first two races of 1999. He's only led two laps, the final laps. Bobby Labonte riding along with Labonte to come off the first lap. Oh, and Earnhardt tries to get between. Labonte dives down to the inside. Two abreast down in turn one. We see Jeff Gordon, the line car on the very right, right now running in 11th position. That's what makes Michigan so much fun for the drivers. You can get three wide down this, you can get four wide down this front straight away. You can really take advantage, get position on the guy and hold him out there going into turn one, take away a spot. Burton running in front. That's Eddie Cheever running second. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is third, and then a battle side by side for fourth on back on board with Dale Earnhardt. And Jeff Gordon was running 11th position going in turn one. He's picked up about three spots down the back stretch. As you see Dale and Jarrett trying to take over fourth spot. That's the blue car on the inside of Rusty Wallace now battling for second spot. Greg Moore down on the inside of Eddie Cheever. See, what you want to see is when you're up front like this, looking back, is uh, seeing all those guys racing back there like that, because you can get away here. The draft's not near as effective here as it is, say, at Daytona or Talladega. Whoa, three wide off that corner. That's big. On board with Greg Moore at the moment. That was Dale Earnhardt Jr. battling Eddie Cheever for second on that second lap. Thank you very much, Bob. I identified him as Moore. You're right, Earnhardt Jr. Now we see him three wide. Whoa. we got Greg Moore on the outside. Kenny Break in the middle. Adrian Fernandez down low, and they get sorted out with Breck deciding to back off just a little bit, although he runs still side by side with Fernandez down through the trioval, and they're four wide. One thing about these IROC cars, they got so much rear spoiler on them that you don't hear the drivers say very often here they took the air off my rear spoiler. They have to take the whole rear end off the car to do that on these things. <laughs> Rusty Wallace has moved up to the fourth position. Now he looks to the inside of Eddie Cheever. Cheever in the silver car. And Mark Martin has moved up from his last row. He's in the yellow car right behind Wallace. That's a pretty good move for Mark from last, uh, right up there challenging for the lead right now. That's pretty impressive. Mark really runs good here at Daytona. Michigan, and he also runs really good at Indy, so he's going to give Earnhardt a fight for the championship. Jeff Gordon diving down to the inside. Bottom of the money. You see Dale Earnhardt, the dark blue car, has moved up to about the fifth or sixth spot. Yeah, I think Dale knows he's going to have to pull some rabbits out of the hat today. If he's going to win the championship, he's got to be real competitive and run hard today. Last his car that last time by was Dale Earnhardt Jr., who's running in second position. There's a bit of racetrack between second and third as Rusty holds down the third spot there in that cream-colored car with Martin right behind him. You talk about Dale Jr., uh, these guys are looking for their first win. He's looking for his first finish, but he <laughs> like to finish one of these things. And there we see Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s second spot in the orange car. Jeff Burton comes down and leads another lap. He did not lead at Daytona at all, led two laps at Talladega, and he has led all the way so far the first five laps here at Michigan. Daytona and Talladega have been almost strictly drafting tracks. Daryl, is there a drafting uh, factor here? There is some down these straightaways. I mean, the turns are so big, you carry a lot of speed through there, and then the straightaways are long enough that you can, what we call, suck up on the guy in front of you. But if you get very far back, it's not really effective. Handling is a bigger key here. How you get through these big sweeping turns is a, bi is a bigger factor. Burton, Dale Earnhardt Jr., and Rusty Wallace are the first three as they're about to complete six laps. Rusty Wallace running fourth, and Dale Earnhardt is up to fifth. 
Jeff Burton won the Michigan round of IROC last year in his rookie season, and so far he's led all the way today. More IROC 23 from Michigan in just a moment. Do you want to get closer to NASCAR action? Take a lap with NASCAR Online. Log on anytime and get all the latest news, up to the second standings, and in depth track analysis. Plus, Garage Cam shows you how your favorite crew and driver are gearing up for the weekend. During the race, find out instantly your favorite driver's position and how the track's running. You can even listen in as drivers radio to their pit crew live. Be smooth, don't hit the wall with it. When the green flag drops, strap into the official site of NASCAR, NASCAR Online. To get any deeper into the race, you'd have to qualify. When precision, quality, and speed count, depend on Craftsman. When you need the power of a wrench with the speed of a ratchet, reach for the Craftsman Quick Wrench. The Craftsman Quick Wrench's unique open-end design lets you ratchet around fasteners. There's no need to reposition. Every Quick Wrench is up to 30% longer than conventional wrenches. That means extra leverage, more torque, and extended reach for tight spaces. Like other Craftsman hand tools, the Quick Wrench is guaranteed forever. Craftsman makes anything possible. Welcome back to Michigan Speedway and a battle up front as we see Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the orange car on the inside get the lead from Jeff Burton. Mark Martin is going to go alongside in second position in the yellow car. Three wide through here and Earnhardt didn't lead long because here comes Martin and Earnhardt. Yeah, and uh, Dale Sr., he just pushed Mark into the lead. Uh, you know, we talk about drafting. Uh, is it effective? Well, I know bump drafting still works well here. We just saw that. <laughs> Now, Rusty Wallace was running third. He got shuffled back to fifth. That's Rusty on the inside in the tan car trying to get by the previous leader, Jeff Burton. Greg Moore looking good in that red car up there. Now Wallace and Burton battle for that fourth spot. Wallace on the inside momentarily taking it, but Burton battling back. Well, the last row has become first and second as Mark Martin, who started 11th, is the leader, and Dale Earnhardt, who started 12th, is running in second spot. Not a big surprise. Not, not really. Uh, how quickly they did it, maybe. They just worked their way right by everybody, and uh, once Mark Martin gets in lead on one of these races uh, on a track like this, he's going to be hard to handle. Uh, but I'm really impressed with Dale's run, Dale Sr., because... He usually is a little more conservative in early going than uh, he was today. On Labonte on the inside. In that pale blue card goes by Greg Moore, goes by Jeff Burton. Here comes Jeff Gordon, the line car. Going about 164 miles an hour. Jeff Gordon right along set, alongside Jeff Burton. We're looking back the front bumper of Jeff Burton. That's Gordon, the line car on the inside. That's a battle for the seventh position, seventh and eighth. Yeah, and Benny, I wish you'd reach over and slap me because I said something I thought I'd never say. Dale Earnhardt's a little conservative <laughs> on the beginning of the race. I, I must not be with it yet. To wake me up or something. <laughs> Down to Jerry Punch. Yeah, I couldn't believe he said it either. That's, a, that's something you rarely hear. You know, the big concern here in practice early in the week was tires. The fact that a number of the open wheel guys practicing, Greg Moore, who sits in that red car about middle of the pack there, said one of the keys today would be for him to save his tires. He said at lap 30 to 35 or 40, when he begins slipping and sliding, he doesn't have the experience in these cars to hang on. It becomes a slide for life, unlike the stock car regulars. So the key for him in the first 30 laps is a sit and ride. Save those tires for the final 20 lap day. Well, I tell you, Greg Moore right now is the best among the open wheel competitors. He's in fifth position, was getting a lesson in drafting from Bobby Labonte, who was touching him as they came down through the trial. We, we have a Goodyear's brought a little bit different tire here for this race this week uh, for the Winston Cup cars, and I'm sure they have them on the IROC cars as well. Lap speeds are up considerably, so is grip. So, uh, May not have a big problem with the tires later. In the what happens on these cars, Benny, is they got so much fuel in them. They got 30 odd gallons of fuel in them. As that burns off the rear of the car, that weight transfers to the front of the car, and you lose a lot of front grip. Front starts sliding across you, you, the race. You get so much weight on the front of the car, slides. On board with Mark Martin, he's the leader of the race. He is the laps leader in IROC competition this year. Led 23 laps at Daytona and three at Talladega. And he is up front once again, looking back on Dale Earnhardt. When this 
Sears Feather and Dale Earnhardt's cap if he could win three high rock races in a row here in 1999 when everyone's talking about his his career being. Well, I think it just goes to show that uh, when you put everybody out there in equal equipment, the cream always rises to the top. <laughs> And maybe Earnhardt will just sit there and ride until the last lap like he's done the first two races of 99 and pull off the move and lead only three laps in 1999, but the ones that count. Right now it's Martin Earnhardt, Dale Earnhardt Jr. running right behind Dad, and then Rusty Wallace and Greg Moore completing the top five. How bad do you think Dale Earnhardt <laughs> Jr. wants to pass his dad? <laughs> He says, I'm not going to school. I've been going to school on this cap for 24 years. I know I'm going to get around him. Greg Moore making a move to the inside, trying to take fourth position away from Rusty Wallace. Greg Moore won the pole and race at Miami Homestead earlier this year in CART FedEx cha championship competition. And he won the U.S. 500 in CART racing here at Michigan last year. But he falls back into fifth position as it's Martin, Earnhardt, Earnhardt Jr., Wallace, Moore, and Labonte, the top six after 13 laps. Michael Landrum again for Timex. And let me just say Timex has a treat for you today. The Timex Turn and Pull Alarm Watch. Just turn the ring either way and pull the crown to set it for short and long-term reminders. Let's try setting it for 11 minutes. Let's turn the ring and pull the crown. Next week, we'll discuss waving. The Timex Turn and Pull Alarm Watch. So simple, we should have thought of it years ago. For great advice about digital technology, head for Circuit City. If you're looking for a DVD player, make sure you choose one with DivX. Only DVD players with DivX play both DVD and DivX movie discs. DivX lets you watch movies at home for about what it costs to rent, but you never have to return movies or pay late fees. This RCA DVD player with DivX is only $349.99. And get any five DivX movies free after rebate. Plug into DivX at Circuit City. Just because you're in front doesn't mean you sit back and watch the others try and catch up. If you can make a great thing better, you do it. And that's what they've done with new Mobile One Tri Synthetic. That's a bit of a mouthful, but basically it means new Mobile One protects against engine wear better than ever before. Helps your anti-pollution gear work better too. For me, using anything less just isn't an option. Nothing outperforms Mobile One. JB! Grab your pen and paper. Prepare for class. You do. Alexander, Mystics, Baby Dread. Alexander, Mystics, Baby Dread. Woo! You just see me go on the floor. X Games version 5.0 launches this June. This summer's hottest competition delivers attitude, amplitude, speed, and big air. ESPN will bring the aerial assault to the city by the bay. San Francisco, starting June 27. Eight days of the world's greatest masters who don't just defy gravity, they control it. X Games 1999. This ain't the summer of love. Extreme sports in San Francisco, extreme racing here at Michigan Speedway. IROC 23, race number three of four for 1999. It's still Mark Martin leading, looking out the back of Mark's car, back on to second place, Dale Earnhardt. Mark Martin seems to be losing just a little bit of his advantage. Right now we have six cars, almost nose to tail. We see Adrian Fernandez trying to get by Dale Jarrett battle going in turn three. Jared has had been having a bit of a struggle since the green flag dropped. He has uh, not been up amongst the leaders where we normally see him. Eddie Cheever is the driver who is off the pace and out of the draft and following his other 11 competitors. Still, Jared really hadn't had that good of luck. You know, he led Daytona, he led Talladega both times. He has some kind of car problem and, and today he's uh, really not competitive or not up there yet. It's a long way to go, I know, but to Earnhardt's is one I'll be watching. Uh, I gotta believe Dad is telling son, boy, you better stay behind me. Uh, I'm the father, you the son here. Listen to what I'm telling you. Looks like
like this. Little Lee had a notion. Oh, he's, yeah, yeah, he's having a notion. Here and he I know it again down to the inside. I know uh, Mr. Earnhardt has got, given him a few motions as well with that notion. <laughs> Here he comes, and I know this ain't making Dale happy. No, this is not making Dad happy at <laughs> no. all. But the car wasn't. Earnhardt Jr. clear down on the flat part, the apron of the racetrack, trying to get second from his dad. But his dad has got some help there from Rusty, it would appear. But no, they run side by side through the first corner, and dad comes out on top again. Mm -hmm. It was pretty, though. Oh, it ain't over. <laughs> See, that's, that's where the, the tree there in the front is learned. The apple's right behind him, and they, they stay together. <laughs> Jerry, what's wrong with Eddie Cheever? He's dragging way behind. Bob, that silver car dropped all the way back to 12th spot and is losing more and more ground. When he came by a moment ago, the engine sounded very sour. I asked Jay Signori, the president of IROC, and Jay speculates that maybe either a cylinder or possibly a broken header as they're mixing it up again toward the front. Three wide. Well, I like, I like this. this. I is, do, too. This is fun racing, right? Look at this. Three wide down in the corner, and Rusty's going to come out. Rusty's on the outside. That should be, oh, but Earnhardt Jr.'s drives her. Earnhardt Sr. drives her down in there and takes over, and Jr. loses his spot. Now he tries to squeeze in behind Rusty Wallace. He'll succeed in doing it, and Greg Moore all makes contact with Bobby Labonte. That's Labonte in the pale blue car. Moore and Labonte have been racing together for several laps now. Labonte on the inside of Moore as they head for turn number three, and they still run side by side. Greg Moore making a good showing here from the Cart FedEx Championship Series. Yeah, and Greg Moore is really, really enjoying this series. He was going back. I was talking to uh, Max Pappas and Christian Fittipaldi yesterday. They said Greg came back and told him how much fun he had at Daytona and Talladega drafting and how, how exciting it was. And boy, those guys said, I want to do that. I want to go do an IROC race. So even though it may be a little blase to guys like Benny and I, these guys really get into it. They sure do. It gives them an opportunity to expand their careers a little more and do some drafting and some running wheel to wheel that maybe they don't do that regularly in the open wheel competition. There's Jeff Gordon in that line green car. And behind him, Kenny Breck in the pink. Adrian Fernandez and Dale Jarrett. Kenny Brack tried to get on the inside of Jeff Gordon down in turn one, and he lost two spots. We'll check out the speeds at the line this time and see who's running the quickest speeds. Little E, huh? Dale Earnhardt Jr. Dale Earnhardt Sr. also had a good lap. Kenny Breck, the 1999 Indianapolis 500 winner, Jerry. And I asked Kenny before the race how much his life had changed since that win in Indy a couple of weeks ago, that incredible run in A.J. Ford's car. He said, I knew Indy was big. I knew it was huge. But the king of Sweden has called him a couple of times. He's going back home to Sweden on Sunday this week for the first time since that win. He said, you know, it's like I have no time of my own. It's like suddenly I've become a member of the Rolling Stones. It's like Mick Jagger lives in my home. Everyone's waiting at the door to see me. I understand that uh, A.J. Foyt tried to interrupt a conversation between Breck and the King of Sweden the other day. <laughs> <laughs> the King was yeah. talking to Kenny and A.J. said, let's go. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure A.J. said, hey, bigger name on the other line. How about getting over here and talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> Labonte and Moore once again to continue to provide probably the best battle overall in the racetrack right now. Labonte has pulled ahead of uh, Greg. In fact, Moore loses another position to Burton. On board with Greg Moore, 23-year-old Canadian, who is ninth in the point standings coming into this third race of four in the 1999 True Value International Race of Champions. resistant bodies, rock solid frames, superior warranties, reliable ignition, and the best cooking systems on earth. These are the beautiful grills, beautifully built by Charbroil. I can yeah. almost taste it. Ever since Mobile One came along, other oil companies have tried to copy it to make a synthetic of their own. But if you take a look at how a copycat performs after some hard miles, and compare it to new Mobile One, it's obvious that all synthetics aren't alike. Today's Mobile One is tri-synthetic. It won't sludge up on you. It'll actually make your engine run smoother. The other stuff, not in my car. 
nothing outperforms Mobile One. IROC Racing at Michigan Speedway. Mark Martin is a four-time IROC champion, has won the last three titles in a row, and has eight wins in IROC competition, third behind Dale Earnhardt's nine and Al Unger Jr.'s 11th on the all-time win list. And he currently leads here at Michigan with the race almost half over. They're on lap number 24, looking back on to Dale Earnhardt, who is running in second position. Rusty Wallace is third. Dale Earnhardt Jr. fourth. Good battle here side by side for the fifth position. Labonte on the outside, Burton on the inside, and Greg Moore is right there also. Jerry, it looks like th this bottom groove is just not working for these guys. They, they make a run on the inside, but the outside line seems to come out on top of them every time. Well, these cars don't have a lot of horsepower. They don't have excessive horsepower. And so that higher line allow them to keep the cars a little freer and keep them wound up a little bit better and give them a little better shot off the corner. So when you get down low, it bogs the car down, so to speak, and they just can't pull up beside somebody. And here's Earnhardt trying to take the lead of Mark Martin. Can't quite make it. Jerry Punch. That's exactly what Jeff Burton said a year ago when he won this IROC race, exactly what DW and Benny were talking about. It's so hard to get these cars to move on the bottom of the racetrack that you have to start making your pass in the middle of the corner and hope and pray someone will push you by by the middle of the straightaway. If you don't get by by the middle of the front stretch or the middle of the back stretch, you're going to be hung out down low and no one will help you because you don't have enough room if he put it to get by. We're halfway through this third race of 1999. That's Mark Martin leading the race. Dale Earnhardt, this is his onboard camera. Looking back to Rusty Wallace. Yeah. Rusty's trying to push Dale by. Mark, uh, Dale's car's handling really good. He gets down in the corner really, really hard. Looks like he's a little tight off the four down here. Rusty and several of them take a run at him down the front here, but Dale's really getting through one and two uh, a little bit better than everybody else. He closes right up on Mark, but Mark's a little quicker down the straightaway. And watch, or watch what Darrell was talking about. Watch Earnhardt as he goes right down next to that white line markup on the top of the racetrack. Earnhardt would, would love to get Rusty Wallace, someone to help him down at that yeah, low line. Yeah. All right, here comes Rusty and Dale Earnhardt. Can they make a pass? Mark's wanting desperately to cut the front of him. Can't quite make it. Oh, uh -oh. Rusty goes up high. But Earnhardt gets the lead. Uh, I don't know. Mark's going to come back on the outside here. Let's watch this. No, Earnhardt got it. So put Dale Earnhardt to the front. Martin second, Wallace third, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. is fourth. Now those fourth, that uh, fifth and sixth place competitors are catching up. There's Labonte and Moore. This is kind of where Greg Moore was talking about. The cars right now, halfway through this race, they're going to go through a little change now. They're going to get a little tighter, a little looser. This is when the driver really kind of knows what his car is going to do. He's been dependent, and now he can start making some pretty good moves. Yeah, let's see Mark Martin. Can he get a run on Dale Earnhardt? Can he pay him back? Can he take the lead? Man, that is so close. At Indianapolis, the series champion will be decided. The total purse of $760,000 with the champion coming away with 225. Right now, the points leader, Dale Earnhardt, is in front. I think the deal's got a pretty fast car, Benny. He seems to be able to get in the corner really hard. Watch how he opens up a gap right there on everybody. He gets in really, really hard. A little tight off, but uh, he gets such an advantage. Well, the Lee's going to try to find him a hole out here. Dale Earnhardt Jr. sticks up on the outside of Rusty Wallace. Now, he has draft in help, and he'll take over the third spot. Passing Rusty Wallace on the high side of the racetrack. Wallace dropping down low there momentarily, and he opens up the line for Labonte. Well, I think Rusty was kind of fishing, if you will, looking for the right car to go with and really ended up uh, losing a lot of spots. Battle for fourth position is side by side. Wallace and Labonte. Now Wallace will get <laughs> back in line. Yeah. That's what you call squeezing in line right there. <laughs> that has allowed Greg Moore to catch up. That's, that's squeezing in line because the guy behind him had to squeeze up out of the throttle to let him in is what it was. Now here comes Greg Moore to the inside of Rusty trying to take over the fifth position. And Jeff Gordon, if he can close up that spot between Rusty Wallace and himself, Greg Moore will be hung out the drive. That's Gordon in the lime green car. I've seen a lot of races here at Michigan. I've been in several of them, and this is the best I've seen all these cars handle uh, throughout the entire race. Everybody's got a chance here. There's nobody really got this thing won yet.
There we see 11 cars all together. Battle for second, third. Mark Martin is second. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is third. On board with Mark Martin, that's Dale Earnhardt Jr. Now he's trying to do the same thing to Mark he did to Rush to get on the outside yeah. up in the corner. Yeah, he's found that line up there high off the turn four, and he's really getting a lot of momentum off that corner and really uh, pulling up on the guy in front of him. Eleven cars still hanging right together. The only car off the pace is Eddie Cheever Jr., whose engine does not sound good. Yeah, actually, the, everybody that was kind of lagging back has caught up with the, the lead pack here. In fact, the whole group is a lead pack. I believe that the lead cars have slowed down. We saw speeds at the line just a few laps ago. The speed was 164 miles per hour. I think we're going to find that these cars have slowed down some. Oh, here's Earnhardt Jr. once again trying to drive up on the outside. Can't quite make it. Well, check the speeds at the line as they come down to complete lap number 31. 19 to go in the third race of IROC 93, IROC 23. Jeff Burton car was the fastest that time at just 162. But again, they have so he got under a got under Martin over there and pushed him up. Actually, he got under and got his nose alongside him and pushed Mark right out of the way. So now the Earnhardts are first that's and second. Right. It's Dad leading Son at Michigan, and I believe that Son wants to take the lead. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be awesome? We'll find out here in a minute. <laughs> Bonnie making a move down low to the inside of Mark Martin, the battle for third position. And we saw on that last lap that the speeds have slowed down. These cars have slowed down a couple of miles an hour in the past 10 laps or so. Up front, it's Earnhardt. Second place, Earnhardt Jr., followed by Labonte, Martin, Wallace, and Gordon. Pete. Yeah. Try Ortho Weed Be Gone. Weed Be What? Gone. As in out of here. Like adios. Weed Be Gone kills weeds without harming your lawn. Didn't hurt my lawn. Ortho guarantees it. Now that's a great lawn. Lawn weeds? Leave it to Ortho. Man, we're gonna get crushed. Yeah. Where's your cousin from Philly who's supposed to help us out? Why don't we just find out? What? Dial 1 800 call ATT and call collect. Now, it's the same low rate every minute, everywhere. So drop right down the center and dial 1 800 C A L L A T T. Is Pee Wee there? Pee Wee? He left three hours ago. Yo, oh, cousin Pee Wee. Hey, he must be the family tree, huh? Dial 1 800 Call A T T for collect calls. It's the same low rate every minute, everywhere. All right! Twist it, turn it, anywhere you want it, anywhere you want it to go. Goes where you want it. Where you put it? The flexible shower massage from Teledyne Waterpick. Need breaks? Now, during the Midas $40 lifetime brakes rebate, save $20 per axle or $40 for your whole car. Lifetime guarantee $40 in savings right now. Go safely. Go Midas. It's party time. Hot tubs everywhere will be overflowing. Make sure your deck can take the heat with Thompson's Wood Protector. For rain, sun, mildew, it's the most powerful Thompson's yet. Thompson's Wood Protector. It never takes a day off. Mr. President, a message from Tara Lipinski. Mr. President, this is Tara Lipinski, and I'm asking you to please come to the Women's World Cup in Pasadena on July 10th. It would mean a lot. Women's World Cup starting June 19th on ESPN and ESPN2. Back at Michigan Speedway, Bob Jenkins, Daryl Walter, Benny Parsons, and Jerry Punch with you as we're nearing 16 laps to go here in this race. Earnhardt senior leading junior is second position and Bobby Labonte has moved up to third and right behind the yellow car Mark Martin sees a championship flying away as he keeps losing spot after spot yeah and I, I think he's panicking a little bit he's made some pretty desperate moves but him and that car just won't go like it was earlier you know Benny I'm just thinking 
I've been in races where I thought Earnhardt was running first and second. <laughs> <laughs> and there was only one. There right? was only one. <laughs> Today, I actually can see it. <laughs> Well, Junior has Matt run a very, very good race so far. He oh, yeah. started from the front row, but he has been up front all the time. Yeah. Little scout was pretty good, I tell you. Jarrett, Breck, and Burton. Side-by-side -side battle between Kenny Breck and Jeff Burton for the ninth position. Labonte got really close to that wall coming off turn four that time. These cars are uh, probably picking up a good bit of push about now. Jerry Punch has more on Dale Earnhardt Jr. running second. Down, down here on pit road, a number of Winston Cup regulars and drivers and crew members are watching with anticipation these final laps of the IROC round 23. A moment ago, one of the drivers said to me, he said, you know, it's been overcast here all morning in Michigan, but in these final 15 laps, we're going to see a sun begin to shine. <laughs> Referring to Earnhardt Jr., of course. Yeah. We love to see some lightning, too. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he's tucked in right on the rear spoiler of his dad as they come down to complete lap number 36. 14 to go in IROC 23, race three. You're riding, you're riding on board with Dale Earnhardt as he looks back. That's what he sees in the mirror, a picture of his son back there. And I guess that's the picture he wants to see behind him. And that third place car of Greg Moore, boy, he's having a fantastic run here this afternoon. Certainly the best of the open wheel guys running third. Yeah, he could be the spoiler in the Earnhardt party because he's getting right up there after him, and Dale, Dale Jr. is going to have to go around Dale Sr. if he keeps pressing like that. Of course, Dale Sr. might just drive off leading, too. Who knows? Uh-oh. I wouldn't have done that. I can stand up here and tell Earnhardt how to drive. <laughs> Don't do that, Dale. <laughs> yeah. Woo, look at little Lee. No, oh, Dave's going to try to drive on the inside. No, here comes Greg Moore on the inside. Moore's going to try to take second position away. If he can get some help down low, he might be able to push by both of them. Is he going to be able to get by Earnhardt Jr.? They're side by side down the back stretch. That's Labonte up on top, joining Dale Earnhardt Jr. But Moore is going to be able to take second spot away from Little E. Wow. Well, I don't know. It's not over yet. That's no. That's a great job. He needs to get up in front of him. And they need to work together. That, he's obviously got a fast car. If Junior had let him in front, they could have probably worked together and made some headway there. Jeff Gordon down on the apron of the racetrack at the line as he tries to go to the front. He's been a sleeper during the race, but now he slides up into third. That's Gordon and Lime Green. Now, we talked about the bottom of the racetrack not being quite as good, but once these cars tighten up, oh, oh somebody's up against it. Bobby Labonte, what an unbelievable save that Labonte. Wow. He was trying to pass Jeff Gordon on the outside. Gordon came up and kind of squeezed him in the yeah. wall. Actually, about Gordon, that job. Gordon was down the inside and slid up into him, I believe, what happened. But what I was going to say about the, the bottom of the racetrack's better now because the cars have tightened up. They've got some push in them now. They'll run around the bottom a little bit better. Got to have more racetrack. Let's watch this fantastic save by Bobby Labonte coming off corner number two, hitting the wall at over 160 miles an hour and hardly flinching. <laughs> Check it out, folks. Bobby Labonte, the light blue car, Daryl. Yeah, there he is. Gordon, uh, Gordon was down there, and he just, <sighs> God, that is incredible. Completely sideways and saved it. And Rusty Wallace just turned left. <laughs> These cars must handle unbelievable. Rusty Wallace just turned left and didn't lose it. That's incredible. Well, they're coming down for 10 laps to go. It's Earnhardt and Earnhardt Jr. running first and second. We'll be back for the finish in just a moment. ESPN Sports Century, a television retrospective covering 100 years of sports. And now you can read all about it. Look for ESPN Sports Century magazine this Sunday in these leading newspapers. When precision, quality, and speed count, depend on craftsmen. When you need the power of a wrench with the speed of a ratchet, reach for the Craftsman Quick Wrench. 
The Craftsman Quick Wrench's unique open-end design lets you ratchet around fasteners. There's no need to reposition. Every Quick Wrench is up to 30% longer than conventional wrenches. That means extra leverage, more torque, and extended reach for tight spaces. Like other Craftsman hand tools, the Quick Wrench is guaranteed forever. Craftsman makes anything possible. Just because you're in front doesn't mean you sit back and watch the others try and catch up. If you can make a great thing better, you do it. And that's what they've done with new Mobile One Tri-Synthetic. That's a bit of a mouthful, but basically it means new Mobile One protects against engine wear better than ever before. Helps your anti-pollution gear work better too. For me, using anything less just isn't an option. Nothing outperforms Mobile One. Today's Sports Century Classic Moment is brought to you by 1010321. Ladies and gentlemen, I now declare the National Baseball Museum and the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York, the birthplace of baseball, open. May it forever stand as a symbol of clean play and good sportsmanship. Heading the first group of immortals inducted is Babe Ruth, as baseball celebrates the 100th anniversary of the grand old game, June 12, 1939. Hey! What are you doing up here? So, you've been using 1010321? What? Oh, I keep forgetting about that. Well, you should try to remember. You get 50% off calls over 10 minutes, every day, anytime. Huh. Well, I like that. But there's got to be a monthly fee, right? Not with 1010321. Dial it, and you'll see the savings on your phone bill. All right. I'll give it a try. Cool. Hey! Get away from my car! Just dial 1010321. 40 laps completed at Michigan Speedway in the third race of IROC 23 for 1999. Dale Earnhardt, the leader of the battle, is again for second position, and Greg Moore is the challenger of Dale Earnhardt Jr. Now he falls back into fourth position as Jeff Gordon has third, but Moore is trying to find any way he can to get up toward the front. Yeah, and what Jeff Gordon found out there a little bit ago is he can run the bottom of this racetrack now. Of course, Gordon, uh, Moore's been down there the last few laps, too, so... The bottom is working with these guys now. They're able to really pull up beside of somebody. Greg Moore won at Homestead, finished second at Milwaukee last Sunday, has six, six top tens, his worst finish 12th at Nazareth in the Kart FedEx Championship Series this year. Rusty Wallace moves to third. He just goes by both of them. They got those cars side by side. Rusty dove down to the inside, went three abreast, and to the third spot he goes. That's Mark Martin running back there in the sixth position in the yellow car. Looking for yet another IROC championship this year. Second in points coming in. Moore and Jeff Gordon are side by side, heading into turn number three. Boy, Moore is right. I mean, he's under the white line. He's really got that call on the bottom of the racetrack, and he look how much momentum he picks up through the middle of the corner. And check that AD pulled up alongside Rusty Wallace off yeah. that corner. That car is really working for him on the bottom of the racetrack. Uh, he's got that thing down the white. <laughs> Here comes Gordon. Jeff making it three wide down through the tri-oval as Mark Martin tries to decide which lane to go with. Gordon Watch slides more. up into third. Watch more go to the bottom. Whoa! I tell you, that, that is a great move for Jeff Moore. Or Greg Moore, I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't Jeff, I'm Jeff Gordon. <laughs> now here comes Bob Labonte. After all that, he's still trying to fight back. Oh, all right. And he drives on the inside of Greg Moore. Oh, he got, how'd they do that? Boy, he got a great run off the second corner. Oh, oh, oh. Boy, Bobby Labonte is just Bobby hanging on. Now he's almost wrecked twice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he had wrecked twice. He just ain't hit anything. <laughs> Three oh, wide yeah. back there for position. Can he wreck in the pink car? And Earnhardt sitting up there in the front of the field just kind of yawning. <laughs> Hope you're having fun back there. <laughs> Well, it isn't going to be as dramatic as his wins in the first two races of 1999, but perhaps Earnhardt can hold on here and win his third straight race. I don't know. Earnhardt may only lead one lap in this race. <laughs> Junior. <laughs> <laughs> only Rusty Wallace and Allen's or Junior have ever won three races in a row, or make that two races in a row, and the only IROC driver to ever win three in a row was Rusty Wallace when he won the championship in 1991. They're going to have to pull something to rabbit out of their hat somewhere to get Earnhardt out of the lead. I can tell you that. His old piece is just handling real good. I mean, he looks real comfortable. He can go where he wants to. 
He's using up all the good racing grooves. He doesn't leave much to work with. Five and a half laps to go. Jeff Gordon runs third. Now it's Mark Martin and Rusty Wallace side by side for fourth. Martin on the inside, Wallace outside. And Mark Martin, who was up front and fell back to the middle of the pack, is now charging toward the front once again here in the closing five laps. Yeah, and when you get along beside somebody and you got almost got past them, boy, that's when you really get frustrated because you had to fall back in line and set them up again. Rusty Wallace back in fourth spot. The Green color car trying to drive to the inside. Mark Martin will drive to the inside. Jeff Gordon comes down trying to get some help from Mark Martin to push his way past Dale Earnhardt Jr. Didn't work. Jeff Burton's there with Mark Martin trying to help him go to the front. That's Burton in the purple car. Now eight riders running right together on the racetrack. Jared and Fernandez have fallen off the pace. Here is Mark Martin. You see how he closed up on Gordon in the middle of that corner? He really sailed that thing off in there. And he is closing up. He's on the back bumper. Can Jeff Burton push him back? Can he push him to the front? Right now, anything's possible. Other than shaking Earnhardt out of the lead. Now, I just don't think they're going to do it. Greg Moore, after running very competitively there for several laps, has also dropped back from this lead group of cars. But among these eight, it is anybody's race. Gosh, I thought Mark would have tried to slide in there, but he didn't. Jerry Punch has more on Dale Earnhardt. Watching some of the IROC officials watch this competitive race here at Michigan. One of them commented a moment ago that Earnhardt in the final laps at Michigan, historically, this track, the turns, are 73 feet wide. They say with five to go, Earnhardt's car becomes 72 and a half <laughs> feet wide. Well, I tell you, folks, I wouldn't have believed it. Mark Martin has worked his way back to third spot as he and Jeff Gordon trying to figure out how they can get by these two Earnhardts in front. Oh, he'll keep digging. I mean, uh, still got a chance. That's Jeff Burton down on the inside of Mark Martin trying to take away the position. We're on board with Jeff Gordon. Look how close they are down the backstretch. They're lapping Eddie Cheever. Well, Mark's really pulling up on the back of Earnhardt Jr. going in the corner, but he just can't quite get there. Now they're trying to, I think he laid back. He's trying to get a run down the straightaway. Mark Martin, Jeff Gordon, he has help. Rusty Wallace is back there, but can they pull out? Two to go. Two to go. Two to go. Boy, this is one of the best IROC races here in Michigan we've seen in a long time. It's the best one I've ever seen. I've never seen this kind of racing in Michigan. Look at Jeff Gordon down on the inside trying to get a run. That's what he did to Bobby Labonte earlier. He got that inside move, but he came back on the outside on him. And, and Jeff pushed. Now he's yeah. losing spots. Yeah. So it's Martin, Wallace, and Gordon behind the two Earnhardts. Burton and Labonte are side by side. And when they come down this time, they'll get the white flag. Well, folks, this I'm is when you find out who's been fooling who. That's right. It's, <laughs> it's time. The white flag is waving. Time to do it. One to go. Two miles of competition. Dale Earnhardt. Hey, can he play the intimidator here? So. You're talking about the one in second or the one in first? <laughs> oh, here he goes. Little Lee's on the inside. Junior trying to take the lead. Oh. But he pushed. Here comes Mark. Mark for second spot. Oh, oh Mark. man. Martin. Nah, that's over now because they'll, they'll get side by side. Dale Senior sitting up here saying, hi. But Martin can't get much of a run down there on the bottom. Earnhardt Jr. looking to the inside once again as they come through the corner. Now he's going to go to the high side. Uh -huh. He has to run. Earnhardt Jr. may have uh -huh. it here. He's got a good run up on top. Let's see how it goes. The final few feet. Son and, and father touch coming down. On the line. <laughs> they don't get any better than that, folks, and listen to the crowd. Man. That was incredible. I like this. <laughs> man, man. This, this is a lot more fun than having to be out there in all that hot air and stuff. <laughs> man, oh, man. Dale Earnhardt winning his third race of 1999, <laughs> but just by literally inches over son Dale Jr. We'll be back to talk with him in just a moment at Michigan Speedway.
In the racing business, the right hardware at the right time can make the difference between winning and losing. Get the toolbox that rocks at True Value. It's just $24.95 when you spend $20 or more on your Visa card at participating True Value hardware stores. Your True Value is the official hardware store of NASCAR, IROC, and homes everywhere. The galaxy's most legendary heroes. Fearsome villains. And coolest vehicles. Now available to take home and play with at Pizza Hut, KFC, and Taco Bell. Right now, at participating Taco Bell locations, you can get one of these cool Star Wars Episode One collectible toys. One in every Taco Bell kids meal you buy. Today there are over 300 red roof ends. We've renovated our rooms, brighter colors, better fixtures, but kept our rates as affordable as ever. How do we do it? Cheap commercials. Call 1-800-THE-ROOF and save money like you mean it. Twist it, turn it, any way you want it, any way you want it to go. Goes where you want it. Move it up high, baby, you can move it down low. Stays where you put it. The Flexible Shower Massage from Teledyne Waterpick. Game 2 tomorrow at 4 p.m. On ESPN. What was that? All these teams are chasing with the Yankees. What's going on? I don't know. Hold the club like you're holding a bird. You don't want to hold it too tight that you crush him or too loose that he flies away. Head behind the ball. I'm getting so good at that. Head down. That is nice. Got him. could not have had a better race. You could not have scripted a better finish. Look at this. The Earnhardt's coming down for the flag. Make contact. Once again, very, very close. And all of a sudden, Dale Earnhardt Sr. says, hey, I'm going down the hill. And he beats his son, Dale Earnhardt Jr., to the line by just inches. Here's the onboard camera. There's contact. There's some more. Now Earnhardt drives to the bottom of the racetrack. And, folks, it was literally inches. There's evidence of the collision. An unbelievable finish. Let's go to Dr. Jerry Punch with the Victory Lane Celebration. And the crowd still cannot believe what they saw. They stand, they scream and cheer. As a seven-time Western Cup champion, here comes the sun. Big and little E. Hang on here, little E. What a finish, guys. Talk about that last lap. Well, I was hoping he'd stay in line in there to at least to the last lap. I see Mark slipping back up there, but the car was a little tight all day. We just ran, ran uh, the car as loose as they could. And as we got down to the end there, it got closer and closer, and Dale Jr. was helping all he could. But got down there, and he wanted to race, so here he comes. And I knew, I knew he'd been working the high line in three and four. I've been working the bottom. And, I figured if he got on the outside, I mean, we could drag race, and we did. He got a little, got a little fender bump in there and going on. Got exciting. He had you there. You had him by about maybe three or three feet with 100 yards to go, and then your dad rubbed you. He bumped you. What a surprise. He knows how to use that air. <laughs> He's pretty good at it. He sucked off the side of the car and got right back by me. I, I knew that he was probably going to win it. I just wanted to make it as close as I could. Did you think you had a shot uh, when, when Mark Martin, when you got back by Mark Martin coming out of four? No, I was just going to hang right there with Dad. This place is, once the tires get old, you got to draft and help people. I tried to help him. I had some guys try to pass me. But uh, we just hung in there. All right, like father, like son, Earnhardt, senior Earnhardt Jr., it took three races for the much-anticipated confrontation on American soil. And man, did the fans get their money's worth here today. Bob? Earnhardt has won all three races in 1999, and he now joins Rusty Wallace as the second driver to win three in a row. Here are the unofficial results. Bobby Labonte made a move on the last lap to go into fourth position, and the best of the open wheel drivers here this afternoon was Kenny Breck, who finished eighth. Greg Moore ran a great race, but dropped back to ninth on the uh, final laps. Now let's take a look at the point standings as we go into the final race of 1999. Earnhardt has a 20-point lead on Mark Martin. Looks like Dale Earnhardt Jr. is going to be the IROC champion of 1999 because I would think an Indy, a, just a solid finish, will make him the champion. Jeff Gordon in fifth position, and that final race of 1999, IROC 23, will be at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and you can see it August the 7th at 4.30 Eastern time. That will be on ABC Sports. 
and will decide the champion of IROC 23 at that time from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Well, it was a great race, and again, Dale Earnhardt beat Dale Earnhardt Jr. Coming up next, horse show jumping the Budweiser Grand Prix of Devon. Thanks for joining us here at...